So I, I just have a question. I, I just have a question to... Uh, it works? Okay. Uh, so I just have a question to uh, the Ileri team, uh, which mentioned um, at the moment uh, the w that was a point of interrogation. What's the difference between um, uh, demagogy and uh, populism? So the, uh, our, the team of NSA explained that em etymologically, uh, demagogy means leader of the people. Is there um, um, etymologically link between sorry <laughs> between um, a populism and uh, a is there a pejorative meaning pejorative sorry is there etymologically pejorative meaning to uh, populism it'll come up stand up and it'll come on uh, in German demagoguery is Führer. So is there a better proof that there's a link between demagoguery and populists? If, if, I, can, if I can add something, you talk, if I can add something, you talked about uh, populism. Populism is a form of demagoguery. Demagoguery is a perversion of the rhetoric, we clearly see it. And, and this is another form. You know, it's like an element on an element. So your question was interesting because that led to our debate and I think they I must have to okay. Thanks. Someone from the NSI, yes. No, I, I just asked. Can you stand up? Okay, no, sure. Um, could, I didn't quite get your point about um, the German translation of the word demagogue, which is in Germany. In Germany, you also say demagogue. So, <laughs> sorry. I think you know something about this language, Lucas. Am I right? A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Back to the back to the house. There's, I think there's a gentleman at the back with a blue with a blue sweater. Thank you. Um, well, I have a question for the last speaker from the opposition side. You said that uh, demagogues brings revolutions. So, what do you think about the French Revolution, which is the base of the French democracy? That's the, 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 the exception that comes from the rules, I guess, because <laughs> <laughs> if you know the history of France, the, the, the French Revolution comes from the people. So it's the voice of the people and not the voice to convince the people. So basically the French Revolution was democracy. It wasn't demagoguery. And that's the nuance we try to show tonight. Okay, there's a young man here at the front. Young man, could you put up your hand, please? Thank you. Yes. Firstly, I too have a declaration to make. Instead of all the people we need to thank tonight, it is the man who founded the FDA, who's kept it alive, come hell or high water, he deserves a great round of applause from us all. Now you realize why I called him young man. <laughs> I, I do have a question for the opposition. Did it not cross your minds that perhaps demagogy is to democracy what seduction is to love? <laughs> Anyone? Yes? Can I, yes, can I please, please Paul, go ahead. You said seduction. Seduction is the tool, exactly. And prostitution is the means. That's the, that's the really difference. Not the means, sorry, the end. That's the difference. 
Shame. Shame. So you don't use prostitution? No, I hope not. But, but as a tool, this is a tool. This is a concrete tool. And seduction is like demagoguery, a way of talking to the people that uh, like, you probably love or not love for love for an hour, I thought. But I think. So I think the, the, clear, the, the clear question on date is, is that prostitution uh, an element of seduction? I don't know. And but why answer? If, if it's seduction, then the, what, what matters in the, is the intention. So he might want to seduce you and have bad intentions. So whether it's prostitution or seduction, the result is the same. Yes, gentleman with glasses. Thank you. I have a question for both teams. So you, at various points in the debate, you mentioned the fact that to you, the difference between populism and demagoguery is that populism is necessarily um, driven by uh, bad intentions. And um, I would like to stress out that maybe you can be a demagogue, maybe even a populist, and actually believe in what you are defending, but you can have good intentions and still be acting um, against the greater good. That's why there is a democracy. Democracy is not about people being, um, about people, um, let's say, have an agreement at the basis. So why do you keep coming with the idea that demagoguery is necessarily driven by bad intentions? Okay, anyone like to? Well, a, a person that has good intentions and is a very eloquent leader is, is just that, an eloquent leader, a person that speaks school, and that's, that's what rhetoric is. Being a demagogue is somebody that is very good at speaking, as some people here are, but uses this as a tool to manipulate consciously, with bad intentions, to manipulate, to do bad. And you'll find that definition in many places, to, do, to awaken the worst part of the human and, and for his own benefit. That's a demagogue. It's very different from a populist. And to come back from your, def to your definition of populism, populism is, it's, it's a certain type of demagoguery, but the demag demagoguery is an exacerbation of populism. It's, it's, everything is in the deg degree. It's in a very, very pronounced degree of populism. Okay, right back to the, the, the house, yes. Good evening. Um, I would like to ask the government, for a change, um, what your actual definition of demagoguery was, because I briefly heard in your speech um, bringing it back to the Greek roots, but I was wondering, was it a tactic or just a way to avoid it in your speeches that you didn't use um, the definition that says it's a politician using manipulative skills to, um, what was the word, uh, like arise or incite hate or movement. Thank you. Okay, Mark, if you wanna. Actually, as it works, yes. <laughs> as with every word, there are, yes, excuse me. There are several definitions, so we try to use uh, all these definitions. I try to present the original sense of demagoguery used as a leader of the people, which was used as far as the 19th century, so it was still fairly recent. Manuel uh, tried to um, present your definition of uh, the usual definition of a demagogue trying to manipulate your, the people, and we used also the speech of Edith to highlight somewhat of a middle ground between the two, so we tried, actually, because we are very honest, uh, to, use, to, to try to study every definition possible of uh, demagoguery. But you, you're right, there is no single definition. It's a meaning of a word is often defined by, the, by its use. Okay, well, I have several people on my right down there. If you, yes, you, you, you make your choice because I, can't see, I can see four hands there, so. Good evening. Um, so uh, my comment was mostly directed at the opposition. So what about the generalized lack of trust in politicians nowadays, as well as the widespread belief that politicians do not follow through on their promises? Does that not imply that all politicians are, to some extent, demagogues, since they get carried along in the campaign trail, knowing perfectly well that they won't be able to deliver afterwards? All right, so can anyone get agree with the idea that there are two different things, rhetoric and demagoguery. 
all right? So all politicians use rhetorics, but not all politicians are demagogues, all right? So if, like I said, the solution is to educate, and if you are enough educated, then you know the difference between a demagogue and a good politician, between a good uh, orator and a, a demagogue. So just make the difference for once, and please. If, and if and if there's this trust towards politicians, well, of course we're not we're not doing we're not praising all politicians in the world. Of course not. And democracy does not have is is with its faults, of course, but it doesn't have anything to do with it. Of course, it, there isn't this trust. People make mistakes, and some may, some make mistakes a little on purpose. Okay, you, uh, Gabriel, you make your choice down there. I, I'm not. I saw a whole lot. Okay, all right, back here then, yes. Hello, so I'm sorry that my question is to the opposition again, but I'm sure the government will have a word about it afterward. <laughs> um, it's more about the strategy, strategy than about the arguments itself. I'm sure you know about the Godwin point. It's when uh, you use repeatedly the Third Reich, and it says basically that when uh, the only example you can have to support your argument is uh, Hitler, it means that you don't have any argument at all. So I'm wondering, no, 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 it's not to attack you at all, but I'm wondering if it was a deliberate strategy or if it was just because it, you felt it was the best choice to support this argument. Okay, Cedric, I think you want to answer that one. Well, we believe that uh, the Hitler example was perfect for this debate, and we still do. Uh, the thing is, uh, yes, we, we reached the Godwin point, and we thought that we could use it as a joke, and at the same time, prove, uh, I mean, uh, pr prove our points, exactly. So maybe, yes, pe may, people may say that it's not a valid point because it's Hitler, but it'd be, um, yeah, I mean, it's still, it, it is still significant to talk about it uh, in the destruction, when you talk about the destruction of, of democracy, because of the magogory. And when you realize that it wasn't our only, our only example, we had one, two, three, four, five examples, it wasn't really the Godwood point. And once more, the, the Weimar Republic is part of history, so, so is Hitler, so just because of a Godwood point is not a reason to not speak about him and use the veridic arguments about him in the debate. Okay, there's a young man there with a the microphone, I think, yes. It, it, it'll come on as soon as the guys see you with the microphone. Does it work? Yeah. Yes, perfect. So I'll try to use what remains of my voice to ask uh, a question to the government. You said that uh, demagoguery is um, saying to people uh, what they want to hear. Then it means that people are expecting something, which is what demagogues say to them. If um, a politician or a great writer or debater says something that is both appealing and unexpected to an audience, is he or is she then a demagogue? Uh, <laughs> right? Anyone on the government want to? Yes, Lucas? Uh, Mark? Um, uh, Whoever, whichever. Um, I think. Um, what, what we meant by saying that it's um, something that people want to hear is not saying that it's something they expect to hear. Um, it's just something that um, they would like to hear. Okay, yes, young lady back here. Thank you. Uh, actually, my question is both for the opposition and the government, and actually anyone on the floor here tonight, does anyone know was, why Declan was referred to as mysterious as the dark side of the moon. <laughs> Does any, do you there is a young lady in the third row who would have an answer to that, I think, but <laughs> who happens to be my wife. But, <laughs> but no, no. <laughs> OK, we have a gentleman back here. Yes, on the left. Uh, I think the government's been really successful at showing that democracy, as it is today, like in France, needs demagoguery. However, according to the definition of democracy that you've given, it's power to people. And is the actual system in our democracies with people electing someone really in a very indirect way 
and being manipulated by demagogues, media, Facebook, Instagram, are we still giving power to people? Okay, good point. Yes, uh, you, you want to answer? Go, go, go ahead, Mark. Well, it depends. If you, we, we spoke of uh, democracy, so if you think what you're speaking of is not a democracy, it's out of the subject. We are saying that democracies are demagogues, so what happens outside of the realm of democracy can be interesting, but out of the question. Okay, who has the microphone back here? Yes? Okay, so th does it work? Yeah. Okay, so this question goes for both teams actually. Uh, I would like to know, because I quite understand that you said that a demagogue is a bad person, someone who uses rhetoric for bad intentions. But when do you draw the line between a good person and a bad person? Does it, doesn't it just your idea of what you agree with and what you disagree with instead of what is good and what is bad? Okay. Yes, uh, good, good, go, go ahead, Marie Charlotte. Oh, sorry, sorry, Paul. All right. Once again, it's about the intention, and yes, of course, it's subjective, but such, so are the demagogues, because if you believe in what the demagogue is saying, then for you, he's just a good orator. But if you're not part of the mob, then you just look at him and say, all right, so he's saying nothing interesting, nothing that makes reason, but he's good, so yeah, I'm gonna vote for him. So once again, it's about the perspective and the intention. And if, Paul, I, yes. if I can add something. Yes. Uh, cool. um, you, you say how to know what is good and what is bad. I think we can clearly know what is the common good and what is the common bad. Shame. I think we can clearly say that um, clean our street is part of a common good. We think that uh, prison put in jail the people who, I don't know, I hurt your mother about. because you were wearing a too, sh too short skirt is to think to definitely the common good. I think. The, the, the question is that um, when you have, uh, when you clearly define the common good, you can clearly define what is good and what is bad. And the question is not that demagogy is not bad. Okay. Is there someone, yes, someone with a microphone back there? Okay. Good evening, everyone. Um, I really love FDA. And there are many reasons why I do love FDA, but one special reason is that um, position sides on the motion are given randomly to both teams. And sometimes you are obliged to go and do research and convince yourself uh, of, um, against a, a motion that you are not actually for or against. So my question would be to both teams, uh, was there any one of you, or may, maybe so many of you, uh, that were initially against the part of the side of the motion that was given, and then, thanks to his research, or thanks to whatever he has done on those three days, uh, he actually uh, ended up believing in the side he was against in the first place. Thank you. All right. <laughs> Cédric, do you want to answer that? Well, the thing is, emotion is never black or gray. It's somewhere in the middle. So you cannot uh, fully agree with emotion. You have to agree partially with it. And I think it's your case and ours. We agree to, the motion, to, the, to our side somehow, but not, not entirely. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. I